Apple's brand new M2 Pro and M2 Max chips are finally here and everyone's talking about the new MacBooks. Except me, because I'm not ready to talk about MacBooks yet when I haven't talked about the most important thing that Apple announced. And that is this guy, the Mac Mini. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Luke, are you insane? The M1 Mac Mini was just an M1 chip in a box and the M2 Mac Mini, well, it's an M2 chip in a box. But the critical difference is that this is the M2 Pro Mac Mini, specifically the cheapest one you can get at $12.99. And this, I think, is probably the most important Mac that Apple has released in about a year and a half. And today I'm gonna tell you why. But first, we gotta open it. I am extremely curious to see what this thing looks like on the inside. So we're gonna go straight from the unboxing stage to the teardown stage. Wow, familiar looking packaging here. We have a Mac Mini in, yep, it's a box. Okay, what do we have here? Got a power cord, cool, don't care. All I care about is getting inside of this thing. We got a little Peely boy here on the bottom. We got a Peely boy here on the back. Okay, cool, unboxing done. Now let's go ahead and break out the Hyfixit ProTech Toolkit and just tear it apart. This right here, this is why you come to the Luke Miana YouTube channel. We don't mess around here. I'm not gonna lead you on with any sort of grand verbiose monologue. We're just gonna take it apart. All right, so far this is just like every other Mac Mini in existence, but I am expecting a little bit of difference because buried in Apple's website, you can see that this actually weighs 0.2 of a pound more than the M2 and the M1 Mac Mini. So clearly there's something going on in here. Okay, so if it's like a normal Mac Mini, it should be held down and is by a little screw just off to the side. Mmm, the logic board is totally different. Wow, and if I'm not mistaken, the heatsink is longer and the fan has been pushed back and tucked under the lip here as well. This, this is actually interesting. I was a little afraid when I started this video that I was gonna open it up and it would just be identical, but we're not having that issue, are we? Okay, so how do we take this apart? Well, we've got some pretty regular looking screws holding the fan on. That looks the same as the regular M1. They've relocated the screws that hold the fan into the sides here so they can actually be accessed without taking everything apart. And look at this, they've got a cutout in the logic board to allow for airflow into the bottom of this fan intake. That's an interesting design. Oh, now I was expecting the power supply to be the same, but they've changed that as well. Take a look in the back of the case here. You can see this long wire that runs from the power supply into the logic board, and it's actually held down with screws rather than a typical connector. So I'll grab the T8 screwdriver and whip those bad boys out. This is actually very similar to the way the Mac Studio works. It has these metal tabs that are screwed down and that's how it contacts with the board. And I actually kind of prefer this to a standard connector because you can't snap the plastic or bend a pin or rip the wires out of the socket. It's just a nice little metal tab. We've got what looks like some T10s to deal with in order to get this board out. Holy moly, great balls of fire. Those are really in there, boys. I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a bigger screwdriver. I need more torque. Okay, we're gonna upgrade from the skinny boy to the chungus. Oh yeah. Oh, they almost got me. There's another one. There's a sneaky third screw. Well done, old sport. All right, now before we pull this board out completely, we do have the status indicator light ZIF connector. And there's also this guy. Um, I don't know what that is. That goes into the power supply as well. Interesting. We'll have to do some digging. Ah, excellent, excellent. Very interesting. This board is a lot bigger than the M1 Mac Mini, though it still does not get anywhere near close to filling the Mac Mini's case. 
So one thing that catches my eye pretty quickly here is this storage module here. We've got three empty pads, and then if we flip the board over, you can see we have another module and three more empty pads. Now, remember, the new Mac Mini can be equipped with up to eight terabytes of storage. And given that this one is the base model with 512, we can assume that these are each 256 gigabyte modules. So if you populate all eight with 256, that gets you your two terabyte. But if you get the eight terabyte version of this Mac Mini, each of these modules has got to be one terabyte. Yeah, that's why the eight terabyte gets real, real pricey. What's also pretty interesting about this board is the density of chips decreases a lot up at the top. Down here, it's all very dense. It's very similar to the M1 and M2 Mac minis. You can see these chips are really packed in there, but up here, not, not so much. We've got all this room for empty pads. There's no traces going under here. It is interesting to see, obviously they had to extend this board for the M2 Pro, but it's not that dense up there. Now, there are some things hiding underneath this heatsink, and that's got me wondering if, if maybe I should take off the heatsink? What do you guys think? Should I, should I take off the heatsink and look at the M2 Pro chip? Yeah, I agree, let's do it. All right, so we have some very crumbly little foam pads over the standoff screws. Okay, one, two, three, four screws later. And let's see if that is all it takes to get this heat sink off. Okay, well, we've got lift off here, but there's some smaller screws here on the side. Aha, okay, so this is just the heat sink cover and it sort of channels the air out the back here. The actual fin stack, that looks like it's mounted separately. So we've got four more screws. Oh, okay, something felt a little loose there. Aha, uh -huh. it's off. So there's the heat sink that keeps the M2 Pro cool. It's pretty small. We have what looks like a little copper core down here. And these, I mean, they might be copper for all I know. They feel more like aluminum and they're anodized in black, of course, even though this is on the inside underneath the cover and no one would ever, ever see it, but it's Apple, so they gotta anodize that heatsink. Oh, look at that. There's the M2 Pro. Oh, that's a big boy. That's beautiful. Well, in typical Apple fashion, it's quite minimalist under here. There's just a simple Apple logo dead center in the chip and doesn't even have Thermal paste spread all the way to the corners. So I guess this heat spreader doesn't really need to spread that much heat. So there's your first ever look at the inside of the new M2 Pro Mac Mini. It's kind of funny that this much work went to designing a new interior for this thing, but the outside looks identical to every Mac Mini for the past 10 years. In fact, this power supply looks like the same one that has been shipping since 2018. So it's probably 150 watts. Obviously that's gonna be overkill for the M2 Pro. It's also overkill for the M2 and the M1, which also use this power supply. This actually does look like a Mac Mini Pro, honestly. I mean, look at the size of this chip with this nice little gold surround. We got a big copper core heat sink. This is pretty legit. So I think what we need to do now is put this all back together and see how it runs. Okay, so a quick Cinematron reveals that we're looking at 11,800 for our score here. And spoiler alert, that's basically identical to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now I've run this a bunch of times back to back and the score has not decreased. After four runs, you know, I can feel warm air coming out the back. Our surface temperatures are a little warm. I think it was about 34 degrees. Again, spoiler alert, that's the same as the MacBook Pro. And thanks to those dual NAND chips, our read-write speeds are blazing fast on this machine. Look at that, over three gigabytes per second write, nearly three gigabytes per second read. This thing is a screamer. <sighs> I have no complaints. What Apple did here was take an overkill heatsink, make it a little bit longer, and then put a CPU that makes more sense in this system. I think, 
Honestly, this is gonna be one of the best products Apple has ever made because it's filling a gap. Until this came out, you had your sub thousand dollar Mac mini and then you had $2,000 and up for the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro. This fits that one to $2,000 range so, so well. But you do have to be a little careful because at $1,299, it's a great price. You can even add another $300 to step up to the regular M2 Pro, and it's still a great price. But if you spec it up just a little bit more, you'll find that you're already at two grand, at which point you might as well go for the Mac Studio, because then you get an M1 Max with more GPU cores. You get a bunch of additional ports, like 10 gigabit ethernet built in without having to pay $100 for it. You get more USB-C ports, you get an SD card, and who knows, we might get a refreshed Mac Studio soon with an M2 Max and an M2 Ultra. So I would be careful specking this thing out, but at this price point with this type of performance, and you'll see more about the performance of this chip with my review of the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro tomorrow, this is probably the best Mac that money can buy. So I'm pretty excited for it. Check out links to buy in the description below. They're affiliate links, so if you do decide to buy one of these things, using those links does help support the channel. Big thanks to all of you for watching and subscribing. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And with that, I will see you guys for a lot more coverage coming really, really soon.